Welcome back and thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, the Director General of Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Jean Kasea, is in South Africa to meet, among, other th among others, with President Cyril Ramaphosa in his capacity as the chair of the African Union COVID-19 Commission. Now, Dr. Kasea was appointed in this new position in February to oversee the delivery of Africa CDC's objectives as per its mandate. Now, these include establishing an event-based surveillance in order to detect potential disease threats and also supporting African countries' public health emergency preparedness and responses, among others. Now, also, equipment worth around 700,000 US dollars was also handed over to the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority, SAPRA, in line with the African Union's goal to develop Africa's capacity to manufacture, produce and supply over 60% of the the total vaccine doses on the continent by the year 2040 and that would be up from the current one percent. Africa's CDC, uh, the, the Director General there, Dr. Jean Kasea, joins us here in studio to discuss some of the activities currently underway in its uh, preparation and also response strategy for the next pandemic. Dr. Kasea, an absolute pleasure to have you here with us in um, our Morning Live studio. Welcome. My pleasure to be invited here. Thank you. So, you know, when we talk Africa CDC, we go back to the COVID-19 pandemic. We remember the work that um, Africa CDC had to do in order to make sure that Africa uh, knew what was going on in terms of the feedback that we received, but also in making sure that all the countries on the continent actually got what they needed in terms of trying to uh, assist those countries in fighting the pandemic. What would you say were the main lessons that we learned from COVID-19? Please let us first acknowledge what Africa did. COVID was a wake up for Africa. And for the first time, Africa came strong as a continent and said, we want to reverse the trend that we, we saw. And if you compare with other continents, we did quite well. First, because we took time to organize ourselves. We had this uh, COVID, uh, AU COVID Commission led by His Excellency President Ramaphosa as the chair, the champion of COVID in Africa, supported by a number of experts coming from a number of countries in Africa. Then we quickly saw that we didn't have vaccines, we didn't have therapeutics, we didn't have diagnostics, and we managed to learn from that. We organized ourselves with what we had to make sure that there was solidarity in Africa. The second one, we said, okay, because we were abandoned, because we don't have vaccine, what can we do? As you correctly said, only 1% of vaccines that we are using in Africa is coming from Africa. And we said, for the next 30 years, we need to change the trend. This is why Africa CDC, getting mandate from our head of state, is working under a program we call it Partnership for African Vaccine Manufacturing to bring this 1% to 60% at least by 23rd and to ensure that if there is a new pandemic, because we know that there will be a new pandemic, we will be protected. This is the first one. The second one, we say we are well organized. We had a champion for COVID who was driving the agenda. Now that we are preparing the next pandemic, officially, today, when I will meet President Ramaphosa, on behalf of all Africans, I will request President Ramaphosa to become the champion for pandemic preparedness and prevention and response in Africa. You know, other continents, they are organizing themselves. On the 21st of uh, July, this July, President Biden appointed a general of army to lead the U.S. pandemic preparedness, prevention, response. Because they know that the next pandemic is coming. In Africa, we need to have a champion. 
someone with a lot of experience who did great job. This is another area where we are working strongly. You know also, we are negotiating the new pandemic treaty with other continents. This is time for Africa to come with a strong voice and to say this is what we want. And Africa said this is supporting all negotiators to ensure that for the next round of negotiation that will start on the 6th of September, Africa will be winning with others because it's a win-win. I think these lessons are driving us to better support our member states. Today we'll do the handover to SAPRA because we need all of our member states to be strong, to have their systems strengthened and to be able to respond to any other outbreak or pandemic. So all of that is very interesting, but also very important work. And, and I must say, it came as a surprise to me that Africa only produces 1%, 1% of all the vaccines that we actually consume. Uh, so today you're handing over uh, to SAPRA that equipment worth uh, 700,000 US dollars. So is that only going to be, um, you know, the equipment handed over to South Africa? Or are there other countries that will also be receiving um, similar equipment in order to facilitate that vision uh, towards producing at least 60% of those vaccines by 2040? We have 1.4 billion Africans living in 55 countries. For me, as data general, all of them are important. But we also have countries that are champions that are piloting the process. South Africa is, this, is one of these countries. By coming here today, ending over this material to SAPRA, we start the process. We are also supporting other countries in Africa. Let me give you an example, what we call the genomic sequencing. Before COVID, we had only two countries having the equipment and conducting the genomic sequencing. With Africa CDC, thanks to all lessons, today we managed to increase from two to almost 20 countries. This is a huge, you can imagine a country of more than 100 million people that I know in Africa, they didn't have it. And this kind of support we are, giving, we are providing to all countries in Africa. There is no country in Africa where Africa says they didn't provide support. But now we are talking about local manufacturing. We cannot start everywhere. It requires infrastructures, it requires knowledge transfer, it requires financing. Then uh, we are using South Africa and two or three other countries as pilot to see how to bring Africa to produce more vaccines that we need. Mm. And then of course, there's the question of funding you know, pandemic funding. So where do the funds come from in the main? You know, uh, this is something critical for us. We need, when we are talking as Africa, to say mm, everything must be based on our needs and priorities. We don't want to be imposed. We want to be respected when we are negotiating with others. I will give you the example of pandemic uh, fund. Pandemic fund is a mechanism that came from the lessons that we learned from COVID. We said, okay, let us have a fund that can provide sufficient fund to all member states. What we learned from the first round of pandemic fund, all other continent came with a regional approach. You have 14 countries in Caribbean, you have a number of countries in South Asia, a number of countries in South America. The only continent sending individual proposals was Africa. Then out of 50 plus proposals sent, only five countries were granted. And this one cannot have impact in Africa. We say now Africa CDC is leading the agenda with all these multilateral organizations to say now it's our time to be to be driving this agenda and we want you to listen from us for the next round of pandemic fund we are coming with a regional approach we want the southern africa 
to come with one proposal. Mm. We want the Central Africa to come with one proposal, the Eastern Africa. You know, when we have this approach, then we know that we are moving. You're not for, for the first round of South Africa didn't receive funding. Mm. And this is not acceptable for me. And this is something we'll correct. But we also have global fund. We have Gavi, this global alliance for vaccine. And but this is opportunity for us to say to all of them, we are strong as Africa. You have to listen from us. I'm still curious, though, Dr. Kaseya, those countries, the five African countries that were approved, did they receive the funding that they actually were promised? Not yet. And we also don't know what is the level of <laughs> funding that they will receive. We are following up on that. But what is important is we need to apply solidarity and we need to play as one Africa, not as individual African countries. Hmm. I think you've, you've made that point quite well. However, if funding is approved and it is not received, what then? Because a country like Zambia, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they received only 30%. So nobody is being held accountable. Nobody's asking the question, why? Where's the rest? Why hasn't it been received? Not nobody's asking questions because Africa CDC released the statement. Mm -hmm. We made it strong and we said we don't want it anymore. We, uh, I, I will have a call with uh, uh, the Minister of Health in Zambia next week to see Africa CDC will support all of these countries, the five countries. It's our role together with other partners, WHO and others, to support them. But it's also our role to follow up. We need to ensure that they will have appropriate funding based on their proposal. If there is any gap, we know that there is a second round. We need to continue to push that. I think this is what we need to do as Africa City to support our countries. Mm. Um, we're out of time. We have less than a minute, uh, Dr. Kaseya, but I, I do quickly want to touch on uh, pandemic preparedness and, you know, where we stand right now as a continent. Because, as you say, um, uh, you spoke about what President Biden was doing in the United States with his appointment. Um, as a continent, you know, where do we stand in terms of preparedness for the next pandemic? We are working hard. We are working very hard. And yesterday, I had a nice meeting with uh, the regional director of WHO Afro, Dr. Moeti. We took them to discuss on how to get the Africa since and WHO can support our country to be ready for the next pandemic. The next pandemic, there are a number of steps. There is a political leg. This is the negotiation that we are conducting at a global level to have the new pandemic treaty. There is the strategic leg. This is what we are doing to ensure support to our members that like this and over that we are doing for them to manufacture a lot of vaccines. There is a technical leg that is how to strengthen, to build capacities of health workers, of uh, community health workers, for them to be able to respond to any outbreak and to build capacity of our labs, laboratories, you know. There is also the last one, the funding and we are making sure that we have a comprehensive action plan well costed we know our needs and based on that we will then first request our own countries also to contribute because we don't want every day to go to partners just to ask and present our need we can start contributing mm -hmm. then others they will come to complement Dr. Kaseya, thanks so much for stopping by. A very interesting conversation. Uh, that was Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, the Director General there, Dr. Jean Kaseya, uh, discussing some of Africa's activities currently underway in preparation and response strategies for the next pandemic.